like half the satisfaction for me of doing this stuff is to finally look at it and say, oh, that looks nice. That was worth it. Was this worth it? Fuck. <laughs> Hey there, I'm not a chemist and here is a bottle of not a solvent. Today we're going to apply a not a chemical reaction in order to get 100% not clear solvent out of this bottle of herb infused moonshine. Now I don't know what is the technical definition of moonshine in the 21st century, but this here is basically just homemade alcohol that has been infused with some uh, herbs in order to make it like, healthier or something. The alcohol itself I believe is made out of grapes and this particular bottle I'm going to sacrifice and make pure ethanol solvent out of it. Don't worry, the first step we will take is to get rid of this beautiful shade of brown. Uh, we're going to uh, use distillation, the thing which is apparently still illegal to do a lot of, in a lot of places around the world uh, unless you pay your taxes for it because you know everything is legal if you if you pay for it and get a receipt. The first distillation we're going to do without a fractionating column since we are mainly concerned with removing the heavy organic molecules that add the color and a lot of the aroma that I can sense and you can't. Even without the column, this will still increase the concentration of ethanol significantly, but we are not interested in, in measuring it or anything like that yet. I collected the fraction of between 78 and 84 degrees since ethanol evaporates at around 78. Uh, the rest I divided into two more fractions of uh, like under and over 100 degrees. They both contained water and essential oils that had a lot of aroma but no real taste in my opinion. I could recognize some of the herbs though and it was a nice bouquet which smelled very sweet as I flushed it down the drain. Okay, let's keep going. I am now setting up the second distillation. At this one we are going to achieve a much better separation between the ethanol and water. Uh, we still have some aroma in the mixture but it's not very strong anymore. To, to achieve this separation let's add the spiky color. Its main goal is to stab any water molecules and make them drop dead back into the flask. That's not even that far away from the truth actually. In a normal situation the vapor from the evaporating ethanol uh, will carry some water or other molecules with it. Uh, that's why in the first distillation we didn't get pure ethanol. And the evaporating ethanol pushed along some of the water and the oils and nothing was there to stop this steam from reaching the receiving flask. Well we now have the spikes. These bad boys force some of the steam to condense on them, uh, after which the, the heavier molecules just kind of lose their momentum and drop back into the flask, while the vapor that actually does evaporate at this given temperature can just continue up and over. And with this we solve one of the problems stopping us from reaching 100% ethanol. The, the second issue is actually trickier and is the reason why anyone would make a video about this topic at all, and it's azeotropes. Some liquids, when they mix together uh, at a certain ratio, they, they create a, a, a mixture which, which might have a, a boiling point which is lower than that of any of its constituents. In our case, uh, when we have 95% uh, ethanol and 5% water, we, we get a, an azeotrope which has a boiling point of like 0 0.5 degrees lower than, than ethanol itself, which means that this 95% uh, mixture will evaporate before the pure ethanol does and therefore 95% ethanol is the purest we can get with the uh, distillation. Well would you look at that while we were talking we finished the second distillation so now we can check its uh, concentration by, by calculating its, its density and checking against the table and see if we've reached the 95%. Uh, spoiler alert we didn't but actually I didn't expect it to end and uh, we actually got more than I expected. We will now measure 50 milliliters of, of the mixture we got. The, the reason it's 50 and not 100, which would be easier, is because my scale uh, goes out of bounds with the, with, the, with the graduated cylinder for 100 milliliters. So we measure 50 milliliters and we multiply it by 2 and check against the density table at 20 degrees, which coincidentally is the exact temperature that my liquid was at, so lucky. And uh, we see that we, we achieved 84% ethanol, which is good. And I think that in the next distillation we would be able to reach 95%. So we are now going to attempt to dry the ethanol immediately during and after the third distillation. 
And to do this, we're going to use the quite popular nowadays molecular sieves, in particular the three angstrom sized uh, molecular sieves. That is uh, the 3A sieves, I guess. Uh, for the amount that you need, uh, basically you have to take into account that molecular sieves uh, absorb around 20% of their own weight in water, and then take into account that we have somewhere around 5% concentration in the ethanol. Take that number, multiply it by 5, and then as a good not chemist, add a bunch extra just to make sure. Uh, what you do with sieves beforehand is what you do with basically any kind of desiccant there is, you, you dry it. Uh, in my case, I dried it at the maximum setting of my oven, which uh, did uh, reach 300 degrees, uh, hooray. And then I did that for four hours and then I uh, let them cool down under, under like 90% vacuum which probably dried them more than enough uh, to be used. Uh, I chose molecular sieves because I thought this would be the, the easiest option out there. A and it kind of is if you really hate satisfaction. The, the problem with sieves is as available as they are, uh, they're kind of bad at being structurally intact. So there's a lot of dust in them and that dust is very fine and it's very hard to filter out. I mean, you could use a uh, diatomite or, or kieselgur or sea light or whatever it's called and uh, it, it will probably work to get most of the uh, dust out. What I opted to do was to make this back and forth switcheroo where I distilled the, the, the ethanol once over dirty but dried sieves and then distilled that over another set of dirty dried sieves and then I, I uh, dried the first set of uh, sieves again because they were wet now which decreased the amount of dust in them so I distilled a third time the ethanol over these newly dried less dirty sieves you're thinking that it should be fine now, you know, like they've been cleaned twice. But no, of course not. It was, it, it's as fine as the dust itself. Actually, it's the opposite of that. It's, it's as not fine as the dust is fine. Look, I mean, in the end, it's murky is what I'm trying to say. Look at this. This is so unsatisfying. This is literally the last thing you want to see when you do chemistry like murky solutions things that just like are just suspended in your solution you start you start with something less pure but much more clear and you finish with something which is technically pure but like it's definitely not clear it's definitely not nice to look at like half the satisfaction for me of doing this stuff is to finally look at it and say oh that looks nice that was worth it was this worth it fuck i don't know i i don't feel like it was it's ridiculous. Anyway, let's let's do the last measurement, I guess. Uh, at this point, uh, same as actually any time before that, I let the, the molecular sieves actually do their, their work because it takes time for, for the water to be absorbed by them. Uh, but also this time I left the, the bottle to just stay for like two or three days. Uh, I, I was really hoping that the, the whole of the dust would settle, which uh, at least for that amount of time, it didn't completely settle, but it is now less murky. So that's good. My idea was that I didn't want this to affect the, the, the density measurements. I don't know if it did, because I'm not sure if uh, molecular sieves are more or less dense than ethanol. But but we did take the measurement, we took 50 milliliters and we measured the density of that and we got something like 103-45% uh, pure ethanol, which, you know, I am going to accept <laughs> as an instrumental or just uh, a user error and I just got to accept that it's probably very close to 100% pure and that's that. And so we do have 100% pure ethanol. It's it's murky. It's annoying to look at, but it, but it's there. So let's just burn a little bit of it and uh, enjoy the blue flame and then say that we've done a good job. Just as a quick summary, ethanol, it's a, it's a, sol it's a very useful solvent uh, in, in a lab. It can dissolve both polar and non-polar compounds because uh, uh, if we just take the maxima that like uh, dissolves like uh, 
the ethanol uh, has a backbone of ethane, which is a hydrocarbon chain, straight chain, uh, which is which is non-polar. Therefore, that would dissolve non-polar compounds. And then it has a, uh, a hydroxyl group, which makes it an alcohol, and uh, that makes it polar because of this oxygen thing happening there. And uh, therefore, it can dissolve polar compounds as well as non-polar. And uh, apart from being a good all-around solvent, it's also a very useful fuel because it's uh, green in the sense that it's easy to, to make. Uh, yeast make it, bacteria make it. Uh, you can also make it out of petrol, of course, but the whole idea of green is to not use petrol, I guess. Uh, and it is a fuel uh, that burns uh, quite clean uh, because of the oxygen in it. Uh, so it, it can add its own oxygen while it's burning. Therefore, uh, it's easier for it to burn more fully and produce carbon dioxide instead of uh, carbon monoxide or any other soot or uh, carbon uh, particles and things like that that are uh, bigger pollutants than, than carbon dioxide. Dioxide. Carbon dioxide is also easier to remove from the system just because plants do it. And last but not least, ethanol is a socially accepted neurotoxin which is legal for adults in many places around the world. So you can marinate your brain legally. And uh, with that, uh, if you're seeing this when it comes out, I wish you happy holidays, happy marinating and I'll see you next year.